hot today. It's the 24th, I believe, of July. I've been through five yards so far today, and I've got almost all the honey supers in all those yards lifted up over bee escapes. I think I had a couple of supers that had some brood in them, so I'd shake them down, get excluders underneath them, but um, it's been a busy day. We've got to be in a dearth right now. The bees are so ill. It's ridiculous. This last yard I went through, normally I can work that whole yard, not get stung at all. You know, maybe once if I accidentally squish a bee or something. Today, probably 10 stings in that yard. Just from cracking the lid <laughs> and moving boxes and putting escapes. I, I wasn't even getting into the brood nest and stuff. They're just ill. They don't like, they don't like July. July and August, they don't like it. So I built these divided medium mating nukes. I've got a dado here and got a masonite divider that goes down in there. Entrance on this side, entrance on that side. And the thought behind this is for queen mating nukes, I've got better odds of getting at least one mated queen back into this box and then I can pull the divider out and merge them. Uh, it's also less wooden wear invested into my mating nukes. But I don't think I'm gonna do these again. I just, uh, I think they're more trouble than they're worth. What I prefer is my single medium on a standard bottom board. And of course I use a stapled down uh, entrance reducer, it stays in year round. And a one gallon frame feeder, eight frames. That is roughly the same size as a five frame deep in comb area. And it gives that colony room to grow. I've got a feeder here that is unlikely to get robbed out and I don't have to transfer them. That's what I'm doing right here is I'm transferring one nuke out of here and into there and then I'm trying to catch the field bees. So I've got to tape over this entrance back here, reorient them and it's just extra work. I'd much rather have a row of these lined up, maybe facing different directions and just be able to leave them. And then if they get big, stick another box on them. I think that's what I'm gonna do next year. This, uh, this nuke yard is kind of chaotic here, but by next year, I think I'm gonna have stands in here. Maybe push it out past the old fence here and clean that uh, field area up. Have enough spots to get 100 nukes started in here. Maybe 150 something like that next year plans these bees have got june bugs balled up they're kicking them out i don't know what in the world the june bugs are trying to do getting in there She's trying to sting that June bug. She's trying everything she can to sting him. When I was a kid, I would catch these and tie feed sack strings to their hind legs and then they'll fly in circles all around you. I did not know that they were a pest for beehives. Never knew that. beekeeper, nuke producer, queen producer, getting more into it. Good guy. And um, he's riding around with me today. We're pulling off some almost empty supers. And uh, I just met the old 
farmer that turned me down for a bee yard a couple months ago. I left them with a bottle of honey and they talked it over with their son some since then and a, a hard no became a yes. So I've got a new bee yard and it's a good spot. It's, uh, it takes me about 20 minutes to get to my yard back up here and it's only seven miles from home but it's bad roads and this new yard will be a mile, mile and a half away from my other yard up here but it's on the same road so now I can drive 20 minutes more two bee yards instead of just one. So being nice to people and leaving a bottle of honey with my name on it. I think it's sitting on their table and they've thought about it a time or two. Things worked out. They don't always but they did. Joe, you got anything to say? I'm good. You don't want to do a monologue or anything? See, this is what YouTubers do. We just drive around and talk to our phones. I'm not a YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'd say I'm probably two-thirds through with my extraction here. I'm going to get these supers today, uh, this morning, before I start a day of other work and then these I'll probably let dry until tomorrow I just pulled them in yesterday and there's some uncapped stuff in there so I'm letting them dry out some but I'll show you sort of what I'm doing um, I'll pull a box and set it here pull frames out into the uncapper they go straight into extractor number one and then the box gets stored, another box, get this one full. Um, and then I'll, while this one is spinning, I'll work on that one, get it full and spinning. And by the time I'm, I've got that one going, this one is ready to pull empty frames out of. And I'm classifying frames as they come out. So if it's had nothing but honey in it, just pure honeycomb, I make boxes of nine frame honeycomb supers. If it's had any brood in it, it goes here, and I will store those differently. I'll actually put these back on hives, use them to grow nukes, uh, but these have got to be protected from wax moth. And then I've got entire boxes of foundation that didn't get drawn or that needs to be reworked or rewaxed or something over winter. And then I've got some drone comb that um, I tried to get a bunch of drone comb drawn this year so I'll have a good mating next year and some of it worked some of it didn't but drone comb gets classified separately so I think this is a pretty efficient system you know you may as well classify these frames as they're coming out of the extractor I have to handle them anyway and as long as I've got extra boxes around it doesn't take any extra time to get that done so um, I've got to take care of my brood comb versus my honeycomb. Wax moth won't really bother the honeycomb nearly as much as they will the brood comb. Um, and brood comb's best, highest and best use is to go back on a hive. So it makes sense to me to keep that separate. Um, it's just easier to do this as it's coming out of the extractor. You may as well do it all at once. You know, minimum touches. It's the name of the game, minimum touches. If there's one thing I don't like about this Hillco extractor, it is that plastic frames don't fit in here very well. The notches on this inner ring are not wide enough to fit the end bars. They, they're wide enough to fit a tapered end bar that is on the wooden frame just fine. So they fit the wooden frames just fine if this was further out, just by a quarter inch, it would work just fine. But as it is, I've got to push that down in there and crack a piece of my frame off. That's a problem. I may have to disassemble this and pull that reel out and die grind all those notches over winter problem I mentioned with the Hillco, I don't have that at all with this my accent because the notches on that inner reel 
or the inner ring are wide enough for the end bars on plastic frames. I don't know if that's just a problem with mine. I don't know if that has um, been changed or fixed since I bought mine. No idea. Getting my OAV mic checks started today. Uh, there's a lot to that. I've got some nukes that are still on double screen boards, and um, you know some hives that are on screen bottom boards, but they don't have chloroplast blockers. So I'm taking equipment around with me and doing my feeding and and stuff of the small colonies and colony health stuff, and uh, getting everybody on consistent bottom boards. I want them on a, a screen bottom with a chloroplast blocker and I'm turning the chloroplast over. You can also scrape it and get it clean. And then I'm doing a dose of oxalic acid vaporization and I will come back to this yard tomorrow and pull out those chloroplast blockers and see how many mites are in the hive. Too hot to be working bees right now, but I'm working bees. Not not fun stuff either. I'm getting this yard in shape to do OEV feeding and changing bottom boards and checking queen right and all sorts of stuff. Tis the season for queenless hives. I found two already in this yard. <sighs> Shake them out. Get the comb cleaned up, preserve it. One of them has already got hive beetles getting started in it, so I'll have to freeze that one, which is a pain. Ah, combine it or whatever. It's that time of year. It's just that time of year. That's all there is to it. You know, I was up to about 130 colonies, including hives, you know, medium-sized nukes, small nukes, queens in mating nukes and everything. And just in the last week and a half or two weeks, I bet I'm down to 120. And I doubt the attrition is over. Going into fall, I bet I'll be at 110, 115, I hope. It's just what it is. This is... Uh the not so fun part of the business. I like the beekeeping part better than this. I'm working on uh, nine cases of this size. I've already bottled eight cases of another size and I need to do about six of the third size. Uh, I don't know that I'll get done with everything today. That'll give me a little bit of stock and fill a couple of wholesale orders and get caught up on my wholesale orders, my wholesale accounts. I may even be able to put the honey back on my website. I've been uh, so busy and scrambling to get you know, basically back orders, honey I've promised to people. Been so busy trying to get that done that I have not put honey back on the website. So I shot this yard with oxalic acid yesterday afternoon. Hasn't quite been 24 hours yet. But I want to see what this mic drop is going to look like. And I would say that's not very good. 
Hopefully this will show up. There we go. Got some focus. All those little red spots are mites. That's definitely not the worst that I've seen. It's not good either. wax moth running around there. All these queens here are sisters. So I'm expecting them to perform similarly. Some of my other yards will be more interesting. I've got more diverse genetics in them. Especially the VSH virgins that I got. It'll be interesting to see how they do. early for goldenrod. Early for ironweed too. And then today, I delivered a couple of cases of honey and went up to see a, a new wholesale account it's a country store like a mennonite type store um and they it's a nice store they move a lot of product in there you can you can tell and it, i worked part-time as a retail buyer for four years in my past so i sort of know what those folks are looking for so i went in with you know three bottles of honey my three sizes and wholesale price list, a business card, had samples and everything. I just asked to speak to the buyer or a manager. And guy came out and we looked at the shelf and he said that, you know, we don't really have room for it right now. Um, I've talked to some of my other managers and, and talk about the shelf space we've got. And, and I said, that's fine. You know, you can work me in over time if you want. He was really interested in it being local honey. He wanted to know how much corn syrup was in it none <laughs> that's, that's my answer to that it is as good a quality honey as i can you know my bees can put out and i can not mess up that's how it works and um so anyway i got out of there and i was five miles down the road when he called me and said they were going to condense the shelf space and he wants two cases of each to start out and uh, and we'll see where it goes from there so that was good. I told him I was looking for people who can move volume and I want to be a, I want long-term relationships. So, you know, if he gets honey that granulates or he's got the wrong product mix, he's selling more of one bottle than the other, I'll swap out with him and stuff like that. I'm willing to do that for people who move volume. Uh, that's really what I, I need is to deliver big orders because I don't have the time to, to do it. I don't have the time to deliver, you know, just a little bit at a time. This yard's getting a little grown up. I need to get in here and weed eat. But I'm here to set escapes and pull my last yard of honey for the season. First hive I got into, I've got a queen above the excluder. Ah, then excluder here, and there's a queen in these upper boxes. Probably a virgin that came back and squeezed through the excluder, got into the supers. This makes a mess. Well, luckily I was able to find her. Went ahead and got her marked. She looks young. I think that's exactly what happened. They superseded and she was a virgin, came back, squeezed through the excluder and 
took up residence in the top. So I'll move her below the excluder and just let this go for a month and I'll get to harvest some honey in September, I guess. I was hoping to be done by then, but uh, you do what you have to. Spot checking my bottom boards for mite drops after OEV. There's one, there's one, there's one. There's a few in here. This is one of my VSH virgins I got from Corey Stevens this year. And there are several mites on this one. The previous one had very few, very, very few. That's one. For a colony this size, that's not bad at all. Some, but not a lot. There's one, two. Dozen or so there. It's not bad. This is the worst year for hive beetles I've ever seen. I've got attrition going on in my mating yard where my little baby mating nukes are left. They're just being overrun. Um, I've not given them too much comb. I've not given them too much space. I've not given them too much anything. They're just too small and they're being overrun. So I'm gonna have to do something about that. I don't need to lose any colonies with promise to something that's preventable. It's not really their fault, you know. So we're gonna try to... I've got uh, oil trays that'll go under my bottom boards. I hate doing this. I hate using them because it's messy, it's time consuming. It gets expensive too. But if that nuke is worth $200 next spring and I can spend $3 in a little bit of time now, I'd say it's worth fixing. So I just uh, put a pan of vegetable oil underneath the bottom board and when they push the high beetles down under through the screen, eighth inch mesh, then uh, they go into that oil tray, get trapped in the oil and die. I've done testing and that's by far the, the most effective way to kill beetles. I prefer to just not kill beetles, but like I said, I don't need to lose any colonies, any more colonies than I can, than I have to. I really prefer I really hate doing anything for hive beetles. I think established colonies should be able to handle those themselves, but these little babies, I just don't want to lose any that I don't have to. And if I can take some stress off of them, it may help them grow this time of year. I mean, they're bad. They're worse than I've ever seen. Which is strange because 20 miles away, people in my bee club say that they're seeing fewer than they've ever seen. And we had a terrible cold snap around Christmas that I thought would have killed a bunch of them off. But uh, it didn't. Strange. It's been an odd year all around. Just an odd year. So I went to my home yard yesterday, found two more dead outs. Not good. And then I came over to my mating yard and started finding more. These were just small colonies and they're being overrun by hive beetles. There's, there's nothing else to it. So this colony was a double. Um, 
the entrance to the bottom one was on the front here and then the entrance to the top one there was a double screen board was here and I had to combine these two because the top one had been overrun by beetles and it's over there getting robbed out right now and then this one was overrun by beetles it was sitting right over there so that's actually three nukes that have merged together hopefully they'll make it now I just swapped out their bottom board for a screen bottom with an oil tray. I can put vegetable oil in that. It's just a giant beetle trap. Same deal with this one. Uh, they've got almost no brood in here. The queen has stopped laying. She was in here yesterday, and now they've got a, an oil tray. I'm hoping this will take enough pressure off of some of these nukes that they can grow and still make it. We'll see. I'm gonna go through and grade them, and only the vulnerable ones will get oil trays. I really hate doing this. It's uh, <laughs> that is nine dollars and fifty cents. I got three oil trays out of it So it's expensive It's a lot of hassle. It's messy. I don't like doing it but Some of these I'm just gonna lose They're just too small Let's see what we've got in here Doesn't look too bad. Doesn't smell good. Beetles everywhere. Ow, don't sting me. B. Why'd you sting me? I think this is the, the main hive that I split up to make a bunch of nukes and the old queen is still in there. I wanted to let her get going. They got plenty of beetles. Everywhere, beetles everywhere. Goodness. I'll give them one too. Just filled that feeder up and the beetles are, have been hiding under the floats. Now they're going everywhere else. I've not seen them this bad. It's really odd. We had negative two degrees and negative 20 wind chill in December. I thought that would reduce the population, but boy, it hasn't. It's strange because people just 20 miles away are saying they're seeing fewer than they ever have and I'm seeing more than I ever have. So, unexpected this year, but it's bad. There's a whole lot of these in this yard. I always get some. And they never seem to pass the hive tool test. Beetles, beetles, beetles. The big strong ones I don't worry about, but the ones like this, first I check to see if they've drank their syrup and looks like they've taken most of it down. And then I look for population and coverage on the comb they've got. These girls could really use a boost. That's something you don't see every day. Pretty cool. I just got done feeding this yard. Came and pulled one of the first oil traps I set out. That's been there 20 minutes, maybe 30. I've got a dozen or more beetles in there already. 
hopefully that will help them out some, relieve some of the stress. It's just stress, stress, stress this time of year. Well, it's the time for stress and attrition, dwindling numbers and frustration. But um, I'm actually about to increase my hive counts by two and I'm not happy about it. It's a shame. Um, gentleman that lives down at the end of the road I think it was three years ago I caught a swarm and gave it to him and I've you know he's got all of his equipment from me because I've got a lot and uh, kind of helped him get started and helped him do a split and he's up to two hives and I extracted his honey for him this year on a contract basis and things are going good he's kept them alive and made honey with them so that's good Last year he had a heart procedure and uh, I helped out a little bit during that because he couldn't lift for quite a while. But uh, last weekend he went to get into his hives. I think he was treating for mites and feeding and stuff and he didn't zip his veil up all the way. The bees got in his veil and he collected quite a few stings around his uh, head and neck and had a anaphylactic reaction to it ended up in the ER and uh, the doctor told him that you know since this has happened once it could get more serious the next time so he's getting out of beekeeping and I, I understand that I respect it it's just a, a shame you know and um, they asked if I'd be interested in the hive so I, I told them what I thought was fair what I could buy new stuff for and what I'm planning on buying full colonies for this fall and uh, I, I, you know I'm not trying to get a deal um, they're just kind of in a spot it's a shame I hate to see somebody get out of beekeeping for that but that is that is a, a business risk that I've really thought about and I thought about this a lot the last few years and then over the winter I was watching Paul Kelly talk from the Hive Life Conference and he was saying that they don't allow any of their students up at the University of Guelph to wear gloves. They want them to build immunity to bee stings and they've never had someone become allergic to bee stings because of that. And then uh, Michael Palmer talks about the same thing. Uh, Chris Werner talks about the same thing, says that he doesn't allow any of his guys to wear gloves. Uh, Bob Benny generally doesn't allow his guys to wear gloves. And I've looked into it some, and it seems like the, the um, it's pretty common for family members of commercial beekeepers to develop an allergy to stings. And I think that is because they are coming in contact with bee venom through their you know spouse's clothing or whatever but they're not getting stung and uh there's two responses it's an igg and an ige which i forget uh, which one is which but one of them is where you develop swelling and it can become serious and all this and then the other one is when you become immune to something so at the beginning of the year knowing that i was going to have to make a career of this becoming allergic is a, a business risk so I took the gloves off and I'm working without gloves I get stung every day it still hurts it's aggravating some of them are worse than others get stung in in the cuticle is <laughs> never fun but I don't swell up anymore and I, I think it's um, I think it's just part of the cost uh, of managing a giant risk that could put you put you out of business it really could it's my thoughts i'm not a medical doctor i make no claims of being a medical doctor and i'm not giving medical advice that's my thoughts on the subject right now so i'm pulling my honey off this yard today and i wanted to show you guys something showing this hive over here So this hive was a double medium. It was a nuke started this spring. I got them into a double medium and then they made a lot of honey. Um, I think I pulled some boxes from other hives and put on them to protect it. 
some dead outs or dwindling or whatever, but I've already pulled two or three boxes of honey off of them and they've probably got another couple. So that's a productive hive, but I want to get them ready for winter and I've already am sorting boxes of brood comb out. As it comes out of the extractor, I um, stick my brood comb into full boxes and then I stick my honeycomb into full boxes because brood comb needs to be protected better. So when I pulled the, when I lifted the supers off, put the escape on, I gave them a box with eight brood frames and a one gallon feeder in there and fed them. And when I pull the honey off today, I'll feed them again. And if they need any more, then I'll keep feeding them. And that'll put them into winter as a triple medium, same size as a double deep. I really like that system. I really do. I think it's good for the bees and it's good for me too. 5.30 p.m. on the 12th, August 12th, leaving Hiverama, filling up, got Chick-fil-A. Got to see Corey Stevens, Randy McCaffrey, Justin Ruger, and Johnny Murdoch today. That was a good time. Not gonna get back until after nine o'clock tonight, and I am early to bed, early to rise, so that's late for me. But it was good. I think my presentation went well. Um, enjoyed listening to the other guys talk and meeting new people. That's you know, one of the reasons I do these things. You get to network and meet new people. I think these things help me more than it does me helping them, to be honest. yards with oxalic acid this morning I'm later than I wanted to be uh, getting my rounds done but it's been there's been a lot going on I talked with a Tennessee Department of Agriculture inspector this morning he may be the one that ends up inspecting my honey house and uh, that was comforting it was good there's you know they've got one application for every food manufacturing facility that you can possibly imagine. And there's a lot of stuff on that application that I just don't understand. And I was talking to him about it and, and he was very helpful. Said that a lot of it wouldn't apply to me. Honey kills bugs, you know, it kills germs. Um, very few germs can survive in honey. If you want to disinfect your floor, then just spill a bunch of honey on it and it'll pretty much disinfect your floor, even though it'll be dirty. Um, it will will not have many germs on it. So um, I think I sort of know what I need to do now. And that is just fill it out, send it in, and then let them tell me what else I need. And then get the inspection done. And if I fail, then they will tell me what I need to do to correct. And then hopefully I can go ahead and get my permitting soon. I think it'll be about a month from the time I fill out the application and request inspection to the time I get inspected. So I need to get that done soon. I've got honey in the honey house right now waiting to be extracted. So I, I want to get done with that and then get everything clean and pristine sort of hold that and wait until I get inspected. You can tell from this road, we've had a tremendous amount of rain lately. I'm kicking mud everywhere. We've got a lot of dirt roads around here. It's hard to keep a truck clean. We've had a, a weird season this year. We had a very dry spring and a wet July and August. That's the opposite of what we normally get. We're usually bone dry in July and August. And this year we've had just inches and inches and inches of rain. Like every every week it seems like we get an inch, inch and a half. It's odd. 
August in Tennessee in beekeeping is like attritional warfare. It's just constant losses. This one was queenless. They were about to get slimed by hive beetles. I looked through them. They had three boxes. That was a pretty good uh, colony I made this spring and uh, they were just not viable. So one box went to a good strong nuke and one box went to a, another strong one. Numbers just keep on coming down. Beautiful day. It's finally cooled off some. Humidity's not as bad. It's a high of 77, 78. I fogged this yard yesterday with oxalic acid. So I want to stop in and see what my mite problem looks like. This is a nuke and it is a VSH virgin. Well, based on an IPM strategy, I'm gonna quit treating them. I don't see any. I'm sure there are some, but I don't see them. The uh, VSH, I doubt, is responsible for that. It's a combination of that and them being a nuke. This was an established hive. Might, 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 might. Yeah, they've, they're gonna get cold out. That's more than I want to see. It's over winter. The red pens will get moved to out yards so that their drones cannot mate with my virgins next spring. Several in there. Yeah, quite a few. Not terrible, but quite a few. This is a tiny little swarm that I caught. I don't see any on it. Let's try these other two VSH. Might, might, might. Might, might. Might. It's not bad, but probably not good enough that I'm gonna breed from them next year. But their drones should be pretty high VSH. Got a few, several. Hmm. I figure it's gonna take me about three to five years in my breeding program to get the kind of bees that I want that's even with bringing in some brood stock that I like but I'm a long-term thinker so I think I'll get there Michael Palmer has been working on his bees a long time and um, yeah, I think I like, I want to do the same thing. Back in this little nuke yard, that hive got overwhelmed, it's dead, gone. And you can see why. I put an oil tray under this one. That's how many beetles are dead in it. It's unreal. Worst year I've ever seen for them. Bunch of dead ones, bunch of dead ones. Attrition, attrition, attrition. Good guys, that's terrible. 
need to put some more oil in there. I guess water got in it and washed it out. Feels good to have that many dead. So I've had these supers drying in here since Friday. This is Wednesday. So this will be the fifth day on these and I see no high beetle problems. I had somebody send me a question on that. Um, I've seen no high beetle problems. I'm not really testing this, but I've had a lot of uh, bee work to get done the last couple days and just a lot going on. So I wasn't really concerned about it because I um, read a research paper saying that low humidity, high airflow environments kills hive beetle larvae and eggs. And uh, I see no problems in these. I will show you one thing though. So this frame here, this side of it was capped. This is reading at about 18.2% moisture. That's higher than normal, uh, what I've seen this year. This side had a little bit of capped stuff and some uncapped. The uncapped portion I have dried down to about 16%. So even if I've got capped honey at 19 in here, which I have had before, uh, a couple years ago it was so humid I had 19% honey that was capped. By harvesting this when there's some uncapped honey with it, I can mix that 16 and the 18 together and come up with something around 17. And that works really well. Uh, I'm not aware of any honey that will ferment under about 17, five, maybe 18%. There are some honeys that will ferment at 18%, but I'm not aware of anything that'll ferment below about 17, four, 17, five. So if you've got the ability to dry your honey down, and you're in a humid part of the world, it's a good thing to do. Makes a better product, it really does. Concentrates the flavor, makes it a little thicker, nicer, you get a better mouthfeel with it. It's good stuff. This giant sink may be the favorite piece of beekeeping gear I've ever bought. <laughs> It's wonderful. Here's a little tip for you guys. If you've got a smoker that is cold getting lit and you gotta pump it a bunch to get it good and hot, and you have a little blower. warm a smoker up real quick like that I'm seeing about a half a dozen mites on this board this is uh, four days after oxalic acid so that's a four day drop trash has not been cleaned off so I, I feel like that's a pretty good measure So this hive is not gonna get treated any further. For now. There's a lot of nukes in this yard. All these hives started this spring. This one started this spring. It's got a red. This was an established hive, I think. And they've got a red. Those are the only two reds I've got in this yard. Using this sort of quick and dirty IPM strategy, I'm hoping that over time I can move the needle on mite resistance in my stock. This is sort of the same thing Randy Oliver's doing and he's not, he's not, choose, he's not selecting for VSH or for bees that entomb mites under cocoons or bees that are auto groomers or aloe groomers or you know whatever he's not selecting for any one trait he's selecting for bees with low mite populations whatever traits they may have that give them that and i think that's a 
that's a good approach. I think it's a sensible approach. You know, you're not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak, um, just looking for one thing. This is pretty quick and dirty. I'll, uh, I'll get these two hives in this yard. Whoop, there we go. I'll get these two hives in this yard. Uh, another treatment, look at them again on the screen bottom and then hopefully not touch them again until November or December. Everybody's heavy in this yard except the little nukes. That's good. Beautiful day to be in a bee yard. These hives were shot with their first round of OAV four days ago. I'm a little late getting to them just because uh, they had honey on them and I waited until I got the honey off. So let's take a look here. This is a VSH Virgin from Corey Stevens. Surely there's some. That's one. Hmm. That's all I see there is one. So they're not gonna get anything else and they'll go in consideration to be a breeder next spring. As long as they're gentle. They overwinter and build up like I want them to. A lot of trash there. They're probably going through some brood cycles. I see none. I like none. There's one, there's two, three, definitely not bad, but they've got some. This one has been established longer. They've got quite a few. I started them as a bigger nuke. I basically requeened a, a double medium hive with a VSH virgin. So they had a higher mite level when they got started. They need continued treatment. I'm seeing even, even more down here, quite, quite a few. Quite a few. So we'll give them a red pen. This hive was a nuke this spring, but they got massive, made a lot of honey. Kind of expecting to see quite a few mites on them. See some wax moth or hive beetle larvae there. And there's the mites. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, a bunch. Bunches. Bunches and bunches. Bunches and bunches and bunches and bunches. All right. I would say that that hive doesn't have any resistance. hard to do one-handed. So this is an example of a bad one. You see all of these little reddish brown dots dead in there. This hive would die over winter. 
there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of mites from just one application of OEV. And mind you, that didn't kill any mites under brood cappings. So they've got a major problem. Major problem. This hive will probably get a double red and I'll move them to an out yard over winter. I don't want these genetics mating with my virgin queens next spring. So this queen has made honey, she's gentle, and she's had three consecutive good mite checks. They, so she's been in there at least two years or they have requeened re successfully, superseded, they haven't swarmed, or they would have a red on there. If I know they've swarmed, they've gotten a red. So that is what I'm looking for for breeding stock. That's what I'm looking for for queen mothers. Productive, gentle bees with low mite count that don't swarm. This is an example of uncapping, recapping behavior. Oftentimes you get those little volcanoes that'll expose the head of the brood and then eventually cover it back up. That may be related to VSH and it may not be. So this video has gotten pretty long because, um, well, I got behind in editing and then I've been dealing with some um, late season burnout, I guess. Feel stretched pretty thin, but, and the dearth and attrition and losing hives and stuff is a little depressing. So this video covered like from July 24th up until this week, uh, a couple days ago. So it's August 19th right now. And uh, we have gotten some rain. We've started to get some flow, uh, pollen flow anyway. Some of the fall asters have started coming out and bees are bringing in bright yellow pollen. I worked um, several yards yesterday and the bees were actually pretty happy and they have been ornery. So that's good to see. I'm taking brood comb and cycling it into small nukes, uh, being very careful about hive beetles. I've got tremendous hive beetle pressure this year. It's terrible. And dealing with mites and feeding everything. I'm, I don't think I showed this, but I'm tipping hives up as I go through and anything that's light is getting fed. It's a whole lot easier to feed in August than it is October in Tennessee. Um, you know, we've got plenty of hot weather for bees to um, dry syrup out right now and it will help stimulate brood rearing which is good and help clean the colony up of any disease issues they may have so it's a good thing to do right now i'm uh, i'm actually out of sugar uh currently so i've got to i gotta go find some more um I don't think I'm going to do a QA this week just because this video is so long, but I've got some good questions that you guys have sent me. So I may do a video just of QA, um, just to get caught up on that. So guys, if you've got any questions you want me to answer, send those to info at duckriverhoney.com. You can also leave them in the comments below. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you on the next one.